lead uh, the British people to stay in, in fear of the consequences of coming out. So there is a conspiracy regarding uh, staying in the European Union, but there is a much bigger global conspiracy within which the European Union is a part, for reasons I've explained in my books and in other uh, video casts. And the crucial foundation method of pushing the world in the direction this hidden hand wants is on public display with this whole manipulation of the European Union referendum. And by that I mean fear. There's a stablemate of fear in this technique of manipulation, and it's called chaos. You put fear and chaos together, and you create a situation where people become open to A, being protected from what they've been manipulated to fear, and B, in a state of chaos, people are looking for order out of the chaos. And if you can uh, present your order, in other words, your agenda, as a solution to the chaos, then vast numbers of people are going to be open to your solution, which is taking your agenda along the road you want it to go. Now, here's, um, here's a motto from the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Ordo ab chao. Order out of chaos. And it's what I've been calling for decades now, the technique of problem, reaction, solution. You create a problem. Uh, you tell the public the version of the problem that you want them to believe. You're looking at stage two for the uh, people to react with fear. And basically something must be done, do something about it. And then those who've created the problem covertly got the reaction, do something, then openly offer the solutions to the problems they have themselves created. And we see this with the problem reaction of war, the problem reaction of terrorism, the problem reaction of economic collapse, the problem reaction of um, viruses, the latest virus scare that comes out, and we see the solutions to the problems and the reactions um, which are pushing this agenda on that I've been exposing now for a quarter of a century. And all this comes together in current events with the migrant crisis. We are seeing um, every day horrific pictures of families and children who are fleeing war zones created by the very um, U European Union, uh, uh, United States coalition, the countries of uh, the so-called West in general, who have targeted country after country in the Middle East, created mayhem, fear, chaos, and the result of that chaos has been vast numbers of people heading out to Europe. Um, crossing uh, the sea in very, very dangerous conditions and then walking through Europe. And at the moment, because uh, of the border effectively being closed to all but a few between uh, Greece and Macedonia, Macedonian uh, border, um, we're seeing a massive backlog of people um, in Greece and the pictures are tragic but as I'm going to explain um, there are other facets to this that are part of this bigger conspiracy it's 
kind of um, ironic that Greece, the so-called birthplace of democracy, is being devastated by a combination of EU and other externally instigated um, economic crises which have brought that country and its people to their knees. And now that is being compounded by this enormous number of migrants who are trying to get into Europe through Greece and are now being held back at the Macedonian uh, border. We've already seen the incredible numbers of migrants who have entered Europe, gone into countries like Germany, and of course the camps in France at Calais, etc., of people who want to make the step into Britain. And what we uh, see is heartbreaking uh, when you see these families and these children. But there is, like I say, a much bigger picture to this. If you ever see something in black and white, then you've got a skewed view of it, because it very rarely is. Um, the truth is almost always found in the shades of grey. And what we have uh, here is not a black and white situation with this migration crisis. In there, you have genuine people who are fleeing wars and tyranny, uh, most of which, almost all of which, are being created by the very Western countries that they are seeking to head into, and the West in general, countries like Britain, France, uh, the United States, of course, always involved, and, um, and Germany's in there in the background as well. And so we see these genuine migrants, and absolutely these refugees of war and tyranny should be absorbed into European communities. They should be given help, not least because the West in general is the cause of their problem, the genuine refugees. But what we also have among um, this vast movement of people are others who are not fleeing tyranny and not fleeing war. They are taking the opportunity to jump on that flow of people and um, for their own reasons. Now, first of all, that um, is making it far more difficult for the genuine people by adding to the sheer numbers. And some of these people are not very nice. And, well, that's racist. No, it's not. You give me any group of people, large group of people, I don't care if they are uh, black, brown, white, sky blue, pink. There will be genuine people in there. There will be nice people in there. There will be people who in need of help in there. And there will be arseholes in there. It's the same the world over, no matter what um, culture, what country, what race you're talking about. But what we see is this black and white uh, polarity that has um, developed, where you've got people on the what would be called the far right, who are basically saying, keep them all out. Keep them all out. People in desperate need because of what Western countries have done to their country. What kind of compassion is that? What kind of humanity is that? Don't be silly. And then you've got on the, the other polarity, on the, the left of politics, people basically saying, let them all in. Which is just as bloody stupid. 
because of the consequences um, for everybody of that. You know, in, in, in Britain alone, there are people already here, black, white, all shades of colour and race, who are in desperate uh, need because of austerity programmes and so on, who are struggling, who are homeless. And you can't just say, let everybody in. And what about the effect on them? And what about the effect of people uh, coming in who also will, uh, many of them will end up in the same way? This has to be seen from a bigger picture point of view and it has to be dealt with from that knowledge. First of all, if you're going to sort out the migrant uh, uh, crisis, um, you have to, first of all, uh, stop this um, uh, systematic war uh, in the Middle East. Because as I've explained in the books and, and in recent video casts, there is a list of countries which they've been ticking off since 9-11, Iraq, um, Libya, uh, Syria, etc. And these have uh, wars of acquisition, because that's what they are, and devastation, have caused such uh, incredible uh, upheaval in those countries that Iraqis and Syrians and Libyans are now trying to head for Europe. And if you don't stop the cause, you're not going to stop the flow of people seeking to escape what you have caused. So there's number one. That has to be sorted out. And we've got to go beyond this black and white idea that you let everybody in no matter what instead of letting in genuine people in genuine need of help and um, looking uh, differently to those who are simply piggybacking that for their own ends. Because there is a much bigger picture here, like I keep saying. The plan, and this locks into the European Union and Cameron with his referendum. The plan is to break up Europe into regions ruled by dark suit bureaucrats in Brussels. No countries, that's the plan. Break them up, end sovereign nations and break them up into regions ruled from the centre in Brussels. Now, there is obviously going to be a terrific resistance to that from people who value their country, value their nation, value their sense of culture. And I, I quote in my uh, new book, um, Phantom Self, an insider who said in 1969 that um, it is much easier to uh, break up nations when you fill those nations, I'm paraphrasing here, when you fill those nations with um, people from a different culture than it is if you try to do it with uh, people who are from that culture, from that nation. And so, this insider said, 1969, they were going to instigate... Um, massive immigration between cultures to break down um, the sense of nationhood in effect, the sense of culture, so that those countries could be broken up and taken over by a much uh, greater uh, supranational force, i.e., in this case, the United, uh, the um, European Union. And that's what we're seeing. I um, heard an interview this week with a very genuine uh, person um, of what you would call the left, talking about the migrant crisis and talking about the German Chancellor Merkel in almost, uh, almost terms that she was a heroine for what she's done in opening Germany's uh, doors um, without question to 
anyone who basically wants to come in. And this is um, so indicative of how the left in politics um, has lost the plot by not understanding what the plot is. Chancellor Merkel is a 100% owned uh, pawn of this hidden hand that I talk about. And thus, when she does something, it's because the hidden hand has demanded it. And if you look at what I'm talking about here, the breakdown of a sense of culture, one of the um, countries in Europe that has the greatest sense of culture, the greatest sense of itself, is Germany. And so Germany has been targeted uh, up to this point more than any other country with this uh, migrant agenda. And so what you have, again, um, taking away the black and white, you have these migrants great numbers of which are absolutely genuine and should be um, uh, allowed in and should be helped, not least because we cause the problem, I say we, the West. And you've got this um, other enormous number of migrants who have piggybacked those genuine people to, to uh, get in for their own reasons. And they and the indigenous population that has been affected by this have been played off against each other by the same hands holding the same strings. Because what they want is, A, a breakdown of the sense of uh, culture to dilute opposition to breaking up Europe into regions and ending nations and ending countries. And they want conflict... And they want um, upheaval between the migrants and the, oh, at least some of the um, indigenous population. Because that creates, here we go, fear and chaos. And out of fear and chaos, they can offer their solutions to end fear and chaos, which actually lead to more fear and chaos. That's the way it works. Um, and so if you want to introduce um, a police state, if you want to um, uh, introduce uh, more and more surveillance, more and more control, then you want upheaval, you want violence, you want conflict, because that's a problem to which you can offer your solution, which is more and more police state. They've done it with terrorism um, quite blatantly. Uh, by um, saying we must take your freedoms away to protect your freedoms. And over the last week, uh, there has been um, the, the text, the contents of a new book by a guy called uh, Tom Bauer, an investigative journalist, that's been um, serialised in um, a British newspaper. And it's about Tony Blair. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about Tony Blair today. Because Tony Blair personifies everything that is wrong with British and global politics. And he also personifies the front man for this global agenda orchestrated from the the hidden from the shadows by people we never see. The book reveals the background in detail after talking to civil servants and ministers and politicians, etc., and insiders around Blair in his years as British Prime Minister. And it reveals the background to the invasion of Iraq which was um, completely manipulated to um, find an excuse, weapons of mass destruction, um, to justify to the public a, um, an invasion of Iraq 
problem, weapons of mass destruction, uh, or the suggestion of it, the claim of it. Solution, invade Iraq, get rid of um, Saddam. It talks about the way, the book talks about the way that um, the invasion of Afghanistan was manipulated by Blair and a tiny few people around him, excluding even the cabinet of his own government. And it also um, talks about how Blair and his home secretaries in the period of the Blair government systematically and very consciously opened the doors to mass immigration because they wanted to, in the words of one insider, they wanted to change the face of Britain forever, irreversibly, by mass immigration of other cultures. Now, what I'm saying here is not um, whether that's right or whether that's wrong in terms of what they call the multicultural society. That's not the point of what this video cast is about. I'm not saying um, anything regarding, um, you know, immigration in, in and of itself at all. What I'm pointing out is that mass immigration into Britain under the Blair government was done on purpose for a specific end. Did they do it? because they cared about the immigrants coming in? No, they couldn't give a damn. They did it to change the face of Britain irreversibly forever. Because Blair is a front man for this hidden hand. That's why he's done all that he's done. And I'll go into that as we go through the video cast. And what we're seeing now is a much expanded European version of the same technique. And right, left, centre, whatever people call themselves, need to stop fighting each other and arguing with each other. And all parties, left, right, centre, migrant, uh, European population, need to turn their eyes on what is really happening and that is that the migrants and the European population are both being used as pawns in a game that has massive implications for everybody a game and agenda that is designed to restructure Europe in its entirety and put it under the total control of a fascist communist, both the same if you are living under it, European Union. And that again should be in the minds of anyone when they come to vote in this EU referendum over whether Britain stays in or comes out. Because, as I keep emphasising, we are seeing a process here. We are seeing an unfolding agenda. If you think it's bad now, strap in. Because they've hardly started. And if we go on seeing the world and events like the migrant crisis in purely black and white terms, without seeing its context in the greater scheme of manipulation, then we'll go on fighting each other and arguing with each other while the holders of the strings go on taking the world where they've long planned to take it. 